What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, today we're continuing on this series talking about airway graphics and loops. And today it's all about the flow volume loop. You don't want to miss it. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about the flow volume loop today. We're going to jump into it and we're going to look at what the flow volume loop is. Now, remember, we've already talked about the flow waveform pattern and the volume waveform pattern. These are scalar graphics. The flow volume loop is an illustration of both of those waveforms just put on an X, Y axis, okay? So if you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. We talk about flow, volume, and pressure to date. This is the fourth part of this series. Go check out those other videos. I'll link to them up here in the video description above here. But today we're talking about the flow volume loop. Now this is normal. Inspiratory phase goes in and then comes out. This is what it will normally look like. Now, when it does not look like this, there's really two primary abnormalities that you might find. Now it's important to recognize that once you know what normal looks like, then it's much easier to recognize what abnormal looks like. So obviously this is abnormal, but what are the two elements that make it abnormal? The first one is the sawtooth patterns that we recognize here on the inspiratory side. And then when we look down here at the expiratory side, we see another sawtooth pattern. Now this sawtooth pattern is going to tell us one of three things. Either one, your patient has an excessive amount of secretions in their airways and you probably need to suction them. Or two, there's excessive amount of condensation in the ventilator circuitry and you need to drain that water out of the circuit. Or three, perhaps your patient has an acute bronchospasm and their airflow through that area of, of increased airway resistance and that bronchospasmic or, or regions has become turbulent and now creates this sawtooth pattern as the air goes through the airways. So you have three different options here whenever you see this. You either need to suction your patient, drain the water out of the circuit, or perhaps administer a bronchodilator. Those are your three options when you see a sawtooth pattern. Now the next one you're gonna notice here, and I'm gonna start over here on the screen, is look at the scoop. Look at the scoop here in this loop. Now look what I'm talking about. This one comes straight back down. So it comes down, exhalation, and right back over. But look at this one. This one comes down and then scoops inward and then comes over. This is what I like to call the scoop in the loop. And anytime you see a scoop in the loop, you need to recognize that you're dealing with some sort of obstruction. Now this does not tell you if that obstruction is bronchospasm, it might be, excessive secretions, maybe you have a patient biting on the endotracheal tube, maybe you have some type of, of, of foreign body obstruction or a cancer, um, you know, uh, some type of cancer obstructing the airway, or perhaps you're just dealing with emphysema that is by nature an obstructive lung disease. So you have to put more thought into it to go, okay, I recognize that I have a scoop in the loop. What does this tell me? And what do I need to do to fix it? So you gotta look further into it so that you know that. Now again, clear this off. One last thing here. Look at, look at, how, look at how this loop does not close right here. So it comes back here, sawtooth pattern comes here, and then it stops. It does not come all the way back. So when we recognize that it doesn't close, it doesn't tell you anything except for the fact that it's not closing. Now remember what I said, this loop here is nothing more than your flow, volume, your flow waveform and your volume waveform put into an XY axis. So if it doesn't close like here, then you have to go back to your scalar graphics 
to see is it the volume or is it the flow waveform that's not reaching back to baseline and perhaps it's both but you have to go back to those scalar graphics. Maybe there's air trapping, maybe there's a leak. Go back and follow that algorithm to figure out which of the two it might be. Now, other than that, we know the two big um, abnormalities that we've identified. Sawtooth pattern, secretions, water in the circuit, bronchospasm, scoop in the loop, Anything that might cause an obstruction, bronchospasm, secretions, a tumor in the airway, a foreign body in the airway, a patient biting in the tracheal tube, or just the nature of an obstructive lung disease, just like emphysema. Now, as we always do, we're going to throw you a question here. i got two questions for you. I'm going to throw them to you. Feel free to pause this screen when I get out of the way. See if you get the answers correct. I'm going to go ahead and work through them. But feel free to go ahead and pause this screen right now. What we have is uh, your patient is receiving CMV, continuous mandatory ventilation, in the volume control assist control mode. You observe the following flow volume loop. Which of the following is the least likely to be the cause of your observations? Now, key thing here is this word right here. Least likely, not most likely, but least likely. So let's look at it here. We look at our waveform. We see we have a scoop. We also see that we have sawtooth patterns on the inspiratory side and the expiratory side. So let's ask ourselves. When we see a sawtooth pattern, what could it tell us? One, excessive secretions. 100% it could be that. What about bronchospasm? Yes, it could be bronchospasm. Could it be excessive water in the circuit? Yes, 100%. But wait a second. The question is says which of the least likely to be the cause of your observations which means it's not A, it's not B, it's not C. The answer here is D, a decreased compliance. You have to recognize that the flow volume loop is not helpful at all in helping you identify a decreased compliance, not when it comes to mechanical ventilation, okay? So the answer here, least likely of this observation is decreased compliance. Let's look at another question. Your patient is receiving CMV in the volume control assist control mode. You observe the following flow volume loop with bilateral wheezes upon auscultation. Which of the following is most indicated? You see, this question is one of those critical thinking questions where you have to look at this loop here. You have to ask yourself, what could be the problem? But then the answer to this question is going to be, how do you fix it? You see, we take out, you have to ask yourself, what is showing, what does that tell me, what is the best, most, most indicated action for me to take? Now, there's something very important here, okay? We'll show it to you in just a second. So let's just look at this. We see again another flow volume loop. We see a sawtooth pattern here, sawtooth pattern here. We have a scoop in the loop. Answer A is suction the patient. Well, we know that sawtooth patterns can and often are associated with excessive secretions. So perhaps we do need to suction the patient. We'll, think, we'll put a question mark by this. Maybe we need to give a bronchodilator. Well, we know that sawtooth pattern is also associated with bronchospasm. So perhaps giving a bronchodilator would fix that. So we'll put a question mark right here. That seems like a good answer too. Maybe we need to drain the ventilator circuit. Huh. Well, we know that a sawtooth pattern is also associated with excessive water in the vent circuit. So perhaps this is a good answer also. Now the last one here is change the pressure control. Nothing here says to change the pressure control. We, 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 we cannot identify changes in compliance as I stated prior and identify the need to change the pressure control from the flow volume loop. So we know it's not D. Okay, so how do we know of these three which one it is? 
This is where you go back to the question and you say, okay, you observe the following flow volume loop with bilateral wheezes upon auscultation. Well, guess what that just did? That just gave you the missing piece that you needed to know that this sawtooth pattern is being caused by bronchospasm. And so the answer here is to give a bronchodilator. Now, if we needed to suction the patient, we probably would have heard coarse crackles. If the answer was drain the circuit, we may well have heard like some distant coarse crackles or just some disruption down the line somewhere. Or perhaps when you're standing at the bedside, you notice that the ventilator circuit is bouncing back and forth as air goes in and out through the excessive water in the circuit. So the answer here, give a bronchodilator. We have sawtooth pattern. It supports bronchospasm. And we had wheezes, supports bronchospasm. Give a bronchodilator, get this patient opened up, and we'll go from there. All right, that's the flow volume loop. It's very, very simple, not that complicated. Really looking for two things, the sawtooth pattern and the scoop in the loop. Know what they mean to you. Know how you can reach out to me if you have questions. Instagram, at Respiratory Coach. TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. Twitter, at Coach RRT. RespiratoryCoach at gmail.com. If you want to send me an email, text me at 817-968-7035 to join my texting platform where I send out occasional informational, educational, motivational content. Sometimes just tell you happy birthday and never know what you may get on any given day. So that's the flow volume loop. That's how you contact me. Hey, guess what? I got a free offer for you. I have a cheat sheet over all of these waveform and loops videos, and I want to send it to you. All you have to do is ask for it. Send me an email to restorycoach at gmail.com. Say, hey, can I get the cheat sheet? And I'll send it to you for absolutely free. Hey, while you're in this video, if you found any value in it at all, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, Hit the like button and leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. I would love to interact with you. And I appreciate you so much for being here. As I end all of my videos, remember, average is easy. Don't be it.